Mike, any uh, difference in this Dallas defense from the last time you saw it? Uh, I mean, they're playing really well. They were playing well back then, but these past couple of weeks, um, I believe they're leading the league in turnovers, might be up there in sacks. Uh, it's really the same guys. Um, and then they also have DeMarcus Lawrence now. So it's a really good, talented group all across the board, great pass rushers. Um, obviously, uh, with Diggs, I mean, they don't have any weaklings. Michael Parsons is playing as well as anybody in the league. So. Um, you know, tough tasks that we're, that we're looking forward to. I've um, been in the league for a while, obviously, and seen a lot of defenders. What makes Micah Parsons a uh, special player? He's just explosive. He's fast. He's got closing speed. Um, I mean, he can kind of do it all. There's not many guys that can kind of play a true Mike linebacker one play, and then you line up, up as a pass rusher the next. And uh, he's, he's, he's very talented and disruptive in, in all aspects of the game. You can't just say, I'm not going to throw it near Diggs, right? You can't just say that. But how do you avoid him doing what he's done so many times this year to so many quarterbacks? Yeah, I think you just have to be smart about it, pick and choose, um, you know, maybe depending on what the route is, the matchup, all the above. But yeah, like you said, you can't just completely avoid him, but you have to be smart about it at the same time. And he's, he's a guy who's number. <laughs> That in all your meetings he's circled or he's yeah uh, yeah I mean uh, anytime you're close to setting the NFL record for interceptions as a quarterback you're gonna uh, know where he's at yeah Mike I know you're a veteran but how, how difficult is it to prepare for a game like if you guys have to go virtual for the rest of this week how much different is it for you um I think being a veter veteran is definitely helpful uh, but if if that's what we have to do I mean I, I know around the league. Some, some teams are going to probably be faced with the same issue. So we'll adjust accordingly and, um, you know, be ready for it. No one, you know, the Cowboys aren't going to care if we go virtual. Not, not like uh, they're going to just do the same thing. So if that's what we have to do, we'll do it. And if uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be out here. Mike, for you just having the consecutive starts, how does that impact you on the field and as you take the, you know, go against the Cowboys? Yeah, I think it's just, you know, it's, it's good to get out there repetitively, be out of the practice field, um, speaking up, you know, in the meetings. And, and just the more the more times you're out there, the more comfortable you're going to feel. So, uh, you know, I think uh, that's for anybody. But yeah, I think it's it's always good. You know, the more more reps you get in practice, the more reps you get in the game is, is going to be beneficial. Mike, just going back to the other question about going virtual. I mean, what exactly changes if you're having a virtual meeting versus an in-person meeting? The meetings aren't as big of a deal. Uh, I think we learned that last year that you, you can get away with doing the meetings virtually. It's really the practice time where uh, you know. If, if we can do virtual meetings at home and come into practice, then obviously our routines will be a little thrown off, but um, that's not as big of a deal now. I, I don't even know what they're discussing. This is kind of news to me, but if practice were to be canceled, obviously that would be a um, bigger deal to, to not be able to go out of practice. But there's obviously no way to practice virtually. It's not like no, 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 we want to be able to do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, the meetings, you can still go through a lot of things, um, but the actual aspect of being in person for the practice, that would obviously be a, an adjustment. Mike, you're probably you know, with Daniel, you know, as much as anybody. How do you think he's handling uh, just the situation he's dealing with right now? Oh, it's tough to say. I think you'd have to ask him. Um, obviously, he seems like he wants to be out there, um, but he, he's been great, great um, in the room, doing everything he can to kind of uh, fill that that role of the, you know, kind of back up last week without Jerry, uh, be there for me, just like I, I, I'm there for him. Um, so, you know, we have each other's backs. Um, who's ever out there, we're, all, we're both going to do as much as we can in the, in the film room, bounce ideas off each other, tell each other what we see, and, um, you know, he's kind of taking on that just like I do for him when he's playing. Is it kind of strange? Usually you guys hurt, can't do something. You know, we see him out here and he's still throwing, he's still running. Like, is it, is it kind of strange that he's in that kind of limbo? Yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, a unique injury in that aspect, but um, he's doing everything he can to, to, to get back. Have you ever been in a situation where the team is playing eight or nine different offensive linemen per game in front of you like you did last week? Uh, no, just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've never, I haven't put any thought into it. Uh, maybe it's come up before, but uh, whoever out there, I'm confident in. And uh, it's not like we change what we're doing offensively depending on who's in there. So who's ever in there, we'll roll with. And, uh, you know, it's our job as a quarterback to do, to do what we're asked. What do you think, sir? Uh, sort of like first game back kind of deal. Uh, for coaches, um, you know, I don't think there's anything in particular. I, I love having Shep back. 
He's obviously a very talented player, um, but I don't think there's any one thing in particular. When you, re when you reviewed the film of the game, what stuck out to you about like why you guys missed some opportunities? Yeah, um, I just think it wasn't really as much about why. I mean, it's just that we need to hit at times, you know, falls on all of us that we, we need to do a better job executing um, in the past game and, and making the plays that we need to make. Take three more. When you look at your performance, I mean, there were a couple of balls that were a little bit behind people. I mean, what do you have to pick up to be better? Yeah, I think we're always working on um, accuracy and getting the ball out on time and, and going to the right place with the ball. So uh, just little things here and there, uh, you know, you'd like to have back, but uh, that's part of it and you have to move on to the next week. While those late scores, I mean, while they were late in the game, did you guys gain anything from that, carry it over to this week? What do you see in those plays? So, I mean, I think it's just, I don't know if you want to call it momentum, but it, it was good to end the game on a positive note and see no one quit. I mean, we had everyone on offense and defense for that matter, speaking for the offense, so we, we um, were obviously down a lot and could have just, you know, coasted to, to the next week, but everyone continued to fight um, for each other. and. It was good to, to, to finish a couple drives there uh, with touchdowns at the end. Did Dallas did Dallas under repair for showing off your wheels there late? Uh, I don't know. It was fir first rushing touchdown of my career, which is uh, I guess hard to believe, um, but it, it was good nonetheless. I've always envisioned myself spiking the ball, but in that situation, I don't think it really called for. <laughs> you, you, when, when you cross the goal line, it almost looked like you weren't sure. Well, I wasn't sure if the guy was going to lower his shoulder or not, so I didn't know. I was trying to prepare for, you know, prepare for it. So. Did you keep the ball? No, no. <laughs>